Hi everyone, this is Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be sharing three interactive reveal wheel cards using Lawn Fawn stamps, dyes, stencils, inks, all of the good stuff. Everything you see here is from the most recent Lawn Fawn release. I love that Lawn Fawn keeps bringing out more dies and stamps that work with the reveal wheel, probably one of my all time most favorite interactive types of cards. This is a long video um, because I am going to be creating all three cards. I will cut out bits and pieces, but for the most part, I have left in the majority of the card making. We are going to start with building our first card. We are using the Reveal Wheel, which is the original dies, and the Reveal Wheel Build a House add-on. So if you have um, the original house or Halloween house, that is the little window die that you're going to use with the Reveal Wheel. And then I want to build a magical background. I'm using Lawn Fawn Plastic Flamingo Deep Sea and Sugar Plum inks with a blending brush to build this kind of magical look. You may notice that in the finished video you saw here a few moments ago that it's much more muted and I'm going to show you how I achieved those results. I did work pretty hard to get these colors to blend seamlessly before adding some stenciling on top, but I think the stenciling is what totally adds the magical aspect of this design. Um, I also really, really love ink blending with dye inks. So any dye inks that you have, you can generally blend with um, as long as you're willing to take your time and kind of gradually build up that color. I do find the more gradual that you build that color, um, the better they will blend together. I'm just going to wipe off my work surface and then I'm going to take the Lawn Fawn Yeti pigment ink and the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil, and we are going to stencil that white pigment ink right over top of our ink blended background. It instantly softens the background and gives it this beautiful, magical look. Um, the name of the game today is Magical Reveal Wheel Cards, so they're all going to have a little aspect of that magical feeling to them. Um, I love, love, love this effect. Let's go ahead and add a little starry sky quickly and easily with the Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust. I'm just going to splatter that all over. Um, this is going to dry really quickly and when you tip this at an angle, you're going to get a beautiful shimmery effect, which I absolutely love. We're going to set that aside to dry for a few moments while we die cut the components of our Build a Castle dies. So this is the latest in the release that works with that reveal wheel window. You can also use it on your own. You do not have to use it with the window, but it is a fun um, alternative if you love an interactive card like I do. I have die cut our castle here from Lawn Fun Fog cardstock, and we're going to take the new brick stencil and add texture to this with Manatee ink. This is another Lawn Fun ink color. And I am just going to um, grab my ink here and just stencil up the four pieces of the castle that I've die cut from this color. And you're going to see when I lift this stencil away, this instantly gives so much more interest to this castle. So let's go ahead and finish inking that. Look how awesome that is. Um, when you place that on the background, it looks amazing. We're going to go ahead and stencil the rest of these components, and then I have die cut everything um, from additional colors of cardstock or wood grain cardstock, all of the components from Build a Castle. Um, really cute. It looks amazing in lots of different colors. Um, I will be sharing some more cards. With this, I would really like to maybe do a whole feature. It's in, it's on my list of things I'd like to do, uh, where I show all of the house and all of the options you can create with that. I think that would be really fun. Let's pull our castle back over here really quick so you can kind of see how that's going to look. So cute. You can kind of see how everything lines up 
pretty easily. We're just going to add a little bit of glue to the top here and I have die cut the tops from Sugar Plum Lawn Fawn cardstock. And we're just going to glue this all together. An embellishment wand comes in so handy. You're going to notice there's a lot of little pieces. There's like the banners that are hanging on the castle, the little windows, all of those little things. So much easier to adhere with an embellishment wand and some craft tweezers. Those are my go-tos. I do a lot of die cutting and these are my favorite go-to tools when working with all these little teeny tiny pieces. I did go ahead and attach parts of the castle with a little bit of foam adhesive to give some dimension. When you're working with the reveal wheel, I always put a layer of foam between my kind of the first layer here where, where all the action's happening um, and the background because it allows you to be able to move that reveal wheel so much easier. But I did go ahead and use a little foam adhesive back behind this piece that we're going to attach right now and also um, the little piece underneath the window. I like how that's going to look and we will also add foam adhesive behind the cloud border that I will be showing here in a minute. So I didn't bring my inks all the way down to the bottom of my reveal wheel panel. I forgot to mention that a second ago. That was definitely on purpose because we're going to have our castle sitting up in the clouds for that magical kind of feel. And because of that, there's no need to pull the ink all the way down. We're going to be just covering that up with a great little cloud border, at which will also serve as the perfect spot to add a sentiment. Fiddling with all of these little pieces, like I said, can be a bit tricky, but it's so worth it. And I think that the more you add to this castle, the cuter it gets. Um, really, really fun. Okay, so there is the base of our castle. Just to kind of keep showing how it's coming together, what it's going to look like. I die cut two borders using the puffy cloud borders from Lawn Fawn, one from pearlescent vellum, which is going to be in the background. I love this because it's a little shimmery. If you don't have pearlescent vellum, regular vellum will work as well. I just like the shimmery effect of this for the quote unquote magical feeling of the card. And then there's my white border that's going, going to go across the bottom. Now before I do that, I want to stamp my sentiment. There is a piece to the castle that you could see here just a second ago. Um, if you are not going to be tucking this into anything, it's kind of like the little moat or, or the drawbridge, I guess I, you want to call it, which would be super cute. But on this card, I, it just wasn't going to fit. So I'm going to save that for another card. But here is my sentiment. The sentiment I'm using is from Tiny Fairy Tale. You can build, I believe, the exact same sentiment if you use, I'm trying to think which stamp set, the Unicorn Picnic stamp set, which I'm going to be using this exact same sentiment on the second card for a completely different design, which I think is fun. So whatever kind of preference you have as far as that goes, and you could use lots of different sentiments too. You are not limited to this at all. I thought this was kind of fun. I think it definitely works for boys, girls, anybody. Um, I think anyone would like to get a magical card kind of interactive design. I am going to add my window opening. I will say I kind of wish I had used a different window opening, um, like the traditional one that comes with the Reveal Wheel window add-on only because I don't think you can see the images back behind the window that great. If you were using this without the reveal wheel, I think this window works a lot more successfully. So you might keep that in mind. I, 
I don't totally hate it. Um, and obviously I didn't want to pull this all apart and change it, but just something to note, if you want to see what's moving in the reveal wheel a little better, probably an open window design would work a tiny bit better. Now look at all these little teeny tiny pieces. I promise it's so worth it. This is what I was talking about. The little banners and then the little insert, I just inlaid, I cut, I die cut it from two colors of cardstock, um, the pink and the yellow. Um, makes a ginormous difference as do the windows. So just like I used pearlescent vellum for that puffy cloud border, I used it for the background of my windows because it has that shimmery effect. It doesn't translate quite as well on camera as it does in real life, but I think it gives you a fantastic window effect um, on the little castle. Plus then the little door handles, that door does open. So if you wanna have some little like the little knight or the wizard or the princess or whatever peeking out of those doors, I think that would be really cute as well. Lawn Fawn thinks of everything. So I've put some foam adhesive along the bottom edge of this card now. And we're gonna pop that just along the bottom. I need to finish adding my windows. I probably wouldn't have added the one window if I'd realized that my dragon was gonna cover it up just simply because it was, you know, you aren't going to see it. But if you weren't gonna place the dragon where I placed it, I like to have it nice and even. I just love how the castle looks tucked into these clouds. The little band, and then we have more banners that are gonna pop up right here. So those are from some Lawn Fawn wood grain cardstock and then some paint cardstock, which so cute. Every little finishing touch for this build a castle is just so perfectly thought out. For my background, I used the Just Stitching Double Rectangles dies. I love this because the reveal wheel panel has stitching around it, and then this double stitching line is so pretty. It just adds a gorgeous finished edge. There's not a ton you see in the background for these cards, so having that little bit of finishing edge really just kind of finishes the card beautifully. From the tiny fairy tale stamp set then, there is a new little call to action greeting that says turn here for magic with an arrow, which again, phenomenal. I always like to add this to my reveal wheel cards so the recipient knows that the card does something. I stamp this with Lawn Fawn embossing and watermark ink. We're going to heat emboss with Lawn Fawn White Embossing Powder. Ties everything into the card really nice. I did use a powder tool. So once I have heat embossed this and the embossing has cooled, I will take a dry rag and buff away that excess powder so we don't have that kind of chalkboard type effect. And then we can pop our reveal wheel in place. Um, we need to go ahead and add our actual reveal wheel to our card and any of the images. So I kind of did all the prep work and then we're gonna go in and stamp and color the images. I knew already I was gonna use all of my images from the tiny fairy tale and the little dragon. I, it was a happy coincidence that I found out that the Trinity Stamps A2 Foundations Circle Stencil, the smallest one, is going to work for my reveal wheel. So this is what actually moves in the card. And I decided to go ahead and ink it up with Deep Sea and Sugar Plum Lawn Fawn inks to add some color. This was great as I didn't have to actually, you know, color it in, which I've done in the past or anything like that. The stencil just worked good to add a little color to my background. I don't do this very often, but I did find it worked really well. I usually just stamp the images directly on the reveal wheel so that there isn't that extra layer, but it turned out to work good to glue, the, glue them in place. So I might do that more often there is a template, which I think is awesome. The Build-A-House template, we're gonna use the template with four openings because we're gonna use all 
four tiny fairy tale images for our card. I'm actually not going to use them for stamping. I will show you how to use templates for stamping a little later in the video for both of my other cards. I'm going to use it for placement. It makes it so that you can perfectly place your die cut images right where you want them to go. So there you saw me stamping, or I'm stamping images from Tiny Fairy Tale and Little Dragon. I'm using Versafine Onyx Black Ink on Bristol Smooth Cardstock. And then I'm going to color my images in with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I did keep most of the coloring in the video. Um, for these images, I did add all the coloring. There were a couple of places a little bit later on for the remaining two cards that I did not. If you want to know all the colors I used for every bit of coloring in any of the images today, I have listed that information out on my blog post that coordinates back to this video. You can find a link to the blog post underneath the video here on YouTube. Our dragon's going to kind of match our background. So he's going to be deep blue and haze blue with pale vi or light violet, pale violet, and purple. And then the flames are a little bright yellow, yellow, and orange. And then we've got our wizard, our knight, and our princess. They're all going to be kind of in the same shades uh, as far as adding these same colors in different areas throughout. The only thing different is going to be our little frog prince with he's going to be colored in some shades of mid green and olive green. But I purposely picked some green colors that were a bit more uh, muted, so not bright and neon-y, which is probably what I gravitate towards most of the time. Um, but I don't think they work very good for this card as far as the rest of the colors we're using. These are tiny images, not a ton of blending is going to be necessary here just because they are tiny. I love that Lawn Fawn has these tiny images. Um, they've got them in several different themes to work with the different reveal wheel type of cards. Little pale pink for the cheek, cheeks on the little frog as well. And then some grays and light gray for the night. And just a little note, I did opt to stamp and color an additional night to pop down into the clouds. I felt like the right side of my card was a little light once I had everything in place. So I'm going to color an, an additional night exactly like this one and place him down in the clouds. And you'll see that here in a little bit. We're going to take the coordinating little fairy tale or tiny fairy tale and little dragon dies and die cut all of these components for our card. And then we can start gluing them in place to finish off the design. Not a ton is left here, just a few steps to assemble our reveal wheel, add a couple of little finishing touches as far as I did add some glittery type things to parts of the castle, some glossy accents here and there. Um, all those little things just add a great finishing touch. So let's start with our little dragon, which he is so cute. Um, definitely love this little guy. And then we're going to glue in place. Remember we placed our template over our reveal wheel. This is going to give us just the perfect way to line up our images so that they're perfectly spaced. And I just kind of attached mine with that brad because it's very easy. There's a small wheel that goes on the back of the, the large wheel connected with a brad. When I flip it over there, you can see it. And that is what you put your adhesive on only. We want to make sure that it is going to be secured to the card and the large wheel is going to rotate. We're going to go ahead and adhere this to another panel that we have die cut. 
And then around the panel, we're going to place some foam adhesive before we attach this panel to that design. And you want to make sure when you're adding your foam adhesive that it's not touching the reveal wheel because the reveal wheel won't move if it is touching that part. I like to use a combination of large and small foam adhesive squares. And then we'll just pop that down in place just like that and look how cute when you move the wheel. We're going to go ahead and place this on our background and just move the wheel around to see all of the different little characters show up in the window. We're going to pop our dragon down here. We're going to have the flames coming out of his mouth like he's this happy little dragon, I guess, is just hopefully not trying to burn down the castle. He's just blowing some flames. We'll add a black gel pen to his eye to make sure it pops. We've got our additional little knight that we're going to glue in place. And I added just a little more liquid adhesive under there and then I use my tweezers to help hold that down while the glue dries. These little iridescent stars are going to be a great little finishing touch that adds sparkle and just add to the liquid stardust of our background. I'm going to add these all over the place, all over the clouds, all over the sky background. They add a fantastic bit of sparkle that I think you can even really see on camera. In real life, they're even better. Then we're going to take Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard and add that to the wings of the dragon, to the banners that are flying at the top of the castle. We're going to use glossy accents on the flames coming out of the, the dragon. Um, let's see where else. I think on the little heart and star on the banners, little white pin detail. Oh, and the horns on the dragon, that's glossy accents. I added the Nuvo crystal drops on the little spikes on the dragon as well. So just a few, here and there, I made sure and added those finishing touches to really make this special and have just a great finished magical card design. Once we have that done, we're going to add this whole panel to a white top fold card base. And then I'm going to show you that reveal wheel working one more time before we move on to our second card design which is going to be another have a magical day, but this time it's going to feature unicorns. So look at the cute little castle window, so much fun. We have die cut the reveal wheel again from Smooth White Cardstock, and this time we're using the Cloudy Stencil to create a pastel rainbow effect all over our panel. Um, we're using ballet slippers, peach fuzz, butter, minty fresh, and fresh lavender inks. So a very soft, I'm using a super soft hand with my ink. I do not want this to be super harsh. I want it to be very, very faint and very light. Once we have our inking and stenciling done, I'm going to go ahead and grab another stencil. This is another brand new stencil called Starry Sky from Lawn Fawn, and we're going to layer our stenciling. It's going to be really subtle, but it's going to definitely add to that overall effect. So we're going to use all of the same colors of ink, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to re-ink up the blending brush. I'm going to just use it as is. 
I also forgot to cut out the window, so I went back and die cut that really quick. <laughs> so here's that Starry Sky stencil, and I'm not going to re-ink these. I'm just going to use them as is so it's not a super concentrated amount of ink, but it's going to give a beautiful light effect of this starry, little starry and dotted design all over our cloudy background. So layering the stencils. I'm going to splatter a little bit of liquid stardust over this background as well. It'll add to the sparkly, shimmery feel of this, and then we will set that aside. So just coloring in these images, I did cut out a lot of this just to save some time today. The colors I'm using are can all be found on my blog post. The images are from Unicorn Picnic and All the Clouds. So most of the unicorn images, the fairies, the wands, and the long cloud um, are from Unicorn Picnic. And I will mention, yes, my cloud's a little wonky. What happened was I stamped it one time for another card, and when I took it off my Misty, it tore. So I'm using a torn stamp, and it didn't get put together super great. Um, most of where it's connecting is hidden so I don't worry about it a whole lot but is kind of a bummer. Then to die cut this unicorn you can either use the unicorn from Unicorn Picnic or you can use this from the add-on for the, the reveal wheel and I went ahead and used that of course so that the unicorn is holding on to a cloud that's going to be have that's going to have changing faces. Before I add any of my images though, I want to stamp Have a Magical Day from Unicorn Picnic right there using Sugar Plum ink. And then we're going to glue, of course, our darling little unicorn in place. And we are going to add our fairies and clouds. The clouds and the rainbow are from all the clouds. Works beautifully. My next card is going to use the all the clouds images again for a completely different look but I love how they just coordinate and complement this so well. Some of my images I glued directly to the background and some are going to be popped up with foam adhesive. It really just kind of gives that illusion of depth and dimension. So before I glue my cloud down, I need to glue down that rainbow. So I glued it down and we're just going to pop our clouds in place. I'm going to have this little unicorn popped up and we'll add another little rain or rainbow. How about cloud right below him that he's sitting in? And what I found was I was going to need more clouds. I did not stamp and color enough to start with which is no problem. I can go back and get some more. So I did, I think I stamped three more, a little tiny one up top, and then these two down here at the bottom. Again, all of these are from All the Clouds. I'm just gonna layer a couple of these down here for my final unicorn. And then add that remaining one up at the top. Anything hanging off the edge, I'm going to trim away, and I ended up using one of the little leftover cloud pieces right here along the edge of my panel. And then we're embellishing unicorn horns, the star for the fairy, um, the edges of our clouds with Nuvo Crystal Drops and White Blizzard, which is a great iridescent color. It's going to uh, just dry iridescent glittery. And it's going to dry pretty quickly because I used it very, very sparingly just to add to the magical feeling of our card. And we also want to add some iridescent stars to this card as well. So this is just like the first one. We're going to use a huge sprinkling of these little iridescent stars all over the design. Almost like that little fairy is waving her wand and all these little stars are floating 
in the sky. We're going to then use the Reveal Wheel Unicorn Picnic add-on template and images from Unicorn Picnic to stamp our cute little cloud faces. So the great thing about this particular template, if you're using just this cloud, you can use, there's two different templates, but this one is specific for the unicorn, the tail that's kind of floating around the front. So it gives you an idea of what is going to show. However, when you move your reveal wheel, you don't really want to have a partial of, like, say, the sunglasses. They're overlapping the template. So I'm going to show you how I got around that. I'm using it to line up my images so they are perfectly spaced. And then I'm actually going to pull the template away and off after I pick up the images with the cover of my Misty. I'll put the paper back in. And then I'm going to stamp my images because they are perfectly spaced already. So as long as I put my template or my reveal wheel back there, they're going to be in the right spot. Now there's also some little cheek images in this stamp set. I'm going to go ahead and just take an acrylic block and some ballet slippers ink and add little pink cheeks to all three faces. I love this. So simple. This is one of the more simple kind of reveal wheel designs as far as what you can stamp in that little opening that's going to move around. We'll assemble the reveal wheel. And then when you put it back behind here, you can see how cute that's going to look. There's a little heart in the unicorn picnic, and so I did adorn the little bums of two of the unicorns with a little pink heart as well, just for a little fun touch. It reminds me kind of um, the little My Little Ponies. They were popular when I was little, and then I think they made a resurgence when my daughter was little, <laughs> um, but that's what that kind of reminded me of. I again used the Just Stitching rectangles, those great double lines. This is on some Simon Says Stamp Lavender cardstock. And we are going to use that same turn here for Magic Greeting from the Tiny Fairy Tale stamp set. We're going to stamp it with the, the embossing and watermark ink, heat emboss with white embossing powder, just like we did for the first card. Um, I don't normally do this, but I thought I would give it a try just to save cardstock and to see how it worked. The reason I don't normally do this is generally because our reveal wheel is not attached to the front cover, it's attached to the back. So having another reveal wheel size panel makes it easier, but I just kind of eyeballed it and put my adhesive on the background panel here instead, and it did work out. I've done so many of these, I think that's partly why. Um, I did put them on the back of this front panel and I just was really careful to hopefully stay away from the reveal wheel, which I did. You just don't want that to hinder the movement of the reveal wheel at all. And then I'm gonna pop that in place. Cause the just stitching lines, the double lines there really kind of serve as a guide to tell you where to go. And look how cute that little cloud is and the different little faces there. So much fun. Okay, next up we have the Reveal Wheel and the Reveal Wheel Puppy Cloud add-on. So where we used the little flat bottom cloud for the last one, this time we're going to have the Puffy Cloud. And there's a couple of different options for the frame. I used the more simple option. This is also going to be the more simple design as far as it's not going to have as much scenery it's going to have a really bold sentiment, but I really love how it turned out. I did add custom color to my background with the Lawn Fawn Kitty Pool and Peacock ink colors. So we're going to go all over our panel with the Kitty Pool ink. And then we're going to go around the edges with Peacock. 
just like I did before. There is going to be some stenciling for the clouds in the background with the white Yeti white pigment ink. Um, that's like the first card I used dye inks to stencil the clouds on that second card. But it's going to be very, very faint because this isn't near as dark of a background. But I love how the cloud stenciling over the top of this is really going to tie in to the little cloud theme that we're going to have going on. So our scene for this card is concentrated just around that reveal wheel puffy cloud opening. This is that peacock ink around the edges. I want to know note something that when you are inking with dye inks and it looks kind of splotchy and blotchy and not all that great, the fantastic thing about dye inks is they are going to slightly lighten as they are absorbed and dry into the cardstock. So generally they smooth out really nicely. Here is that cloudy stencil and the white pigment ink all the way down the stencil this time, or all the way down the panel, pardon me, and you can see it's really light you mainly see it around the edges. Once this is completely dry, I will tell you I did this before I finished the second card. So I did all that stenciling beforehand and that's important to note because that was white pigment ink and it stays wet longer. Now I'm going to go back in and I am stamping my greetings from all the clouds using peacock ink and then a combination of the Lawn Fawn embossing and watermark ink and gold embossing powder. So we're going to stamp Sending with Peacock Ink and then Sunshine and Smiles with the embossing ink and heat embossed with gold embossing powder and then finish our sentiment to brighten your day with Peacock Ink. I thought that highlighting the words Sunshine and Smiles uh, with a contrasting color or in this case embossing powder just added to the fun of the card design. So you can see that probably two-thirds of this panel is our sentiment. A lot more simple, not near as much going on, but it's so super stinking cute. So let's add the rest of our sentiments. And then we can embellish with all of my images for this card are from all the clouds. And this stamp set does have all of the clouds. We're gonna have a sunshine, we're gonna have a rainbow, and then um, four little cloud images, as well as the faces that are gonna change around the reveal wheel. So the opening I'm, or the frame I'm using for the puffy cloud is the simple one. There's also a stitched one. So if you want one with some stitching detail, there is that option as well. Lawn Fawn gives it all to us. Cute little white opening. And then we're going to stamp our sunshine, the large rainbow. That's the same rainbow I used for my unicorn card and then four small clouds and I started with not very many clouds. This is another card where as I got to building I was like I need more and then we're going to color everything in with our Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. The stamping was all done on Bristol Smooth cardstock with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink which is a great ink for a water-based marker project. Bright yellow and yellow were used for the sun peach pink and sugared almond pink for the first ray of the rainbow. This is again a more pastel rainbow instead of primary. Orange and pale orange, bright yellow and yellow, turquoise green and green shadow, and pale or light violet and pale violet. Then green shadow is going to be used for the clouds which is also what I used for the clouds on the unicorn picnic card. Then we're going to take the coordinating all the clouds images and or dies and die cut these images and start putting it all together. And I like to use just a little repositionable tape and die cut as many images with one pass of the machine as possible. So all of this extra space on this piece of cardstock is actually where I stamped my clouds. 
because they're teeny tiny. I'm going to play around with placement and I it ultimately ended up kind of centering the rainbow and that looks the best in my opinion. Part of my little cloud border around the reveal wheel opening didn't get secured so I'm going to do that now. We're going to glue down our rainbow and then we're going to pop up two clouds and the sunshine and then glue down two more little clouds directly to the card base. That gives a great little depth and dimension. Some of the clouds and the sun slightly overlap our reveal wheel opening, but not too much. I want the face that we're going to stamp inside here to really be the showcase for this card. In fact, I didn't even use my Misty. I just stamped them right here on that little scrap piece of paper, colored them in, die cut them, and then added them. And this was one where I just, I couldn't decide how many extra clouds this project needed because I would add one and I'd be like, no, that's not quite enough. I really wanted to have this whole, I mean, it's a tiny little scene, but it's still a scene and I wanted it to really be balanced out great. Just put a little foam adhesive underneath. So cute. And you'll notice that the cloud and the sunshine then hide the ends of the rainbow really nicely. You still get the rainbow effect, but it just kind of keeps it all nice and clean looking. Now this reveal wheel is pretty much just like the last one. There are faces that come in the All the Clouds stamp set, so they're pretty similar to the Unicorn Picnic. Either one would work. But we're going to be adding little faces to our reveal wheel using the Puffy Cloud template this time. So there's templates that coordinate with this window opening. I'm also adding some little Funfetti clay hearts, one on the sunshine and three down below the sentiment for a little additional pop of color and fun. And there's our great little cloud, rainbow, and sunshine scene. And then the reveal wheel the puffy cloud template is going to be perfect for this. We're going to position our faces from all the clouds. We're going to stamp those with black ink. And then we'll go ahead and take the little cheeks images and stamp the cheeks with ballet slippers ink. We're going to assemble this card just like we did the last one. We'll assemble the reveal wheel components. I did go ahead and use that additional layer on this card just because I find I think it's a little easier. I was doing some experimenting with the middle, the second card that I've shared today. Our background for this card, we're using the Just Stitching rectangles with some sticky note Lawn Fawn cardstock for a nice contrast. So yellow back behind this beautiful teal uh, reveal wheel panel. And here is a look at all three cards finished. So much fun, so cute. I hope this has inspired you to create some new reveal wheel cards with the latest stamps, dies, stenciled, all the good things from Lawn Fawn. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this set of three reveal wheel cards featuring Lawn Fawn products. The supplies I use to create these cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more cards featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.